Okay, so welcome back. This is Three Circles Recording Studios YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to show you how to create the effect that was uh, made quite famous by people like Bob Clear Mountain um, using the Eventide series of processes. It's a split harmonizer. Um, it's a way of making a, a mono source thicker. It's a, it's a chorusing type effect um, with detuning um, and modulation delays all built together and I'm going to show you how to do that today in Logic. You can do this in many different workstations uh, you can do it in Pro Tools quite easily. Not so easy in things like Cubase um, in version 4 um, I know this is there is a way of doing this um, so that the, the process pretty much stays the same no matter what door you're using um, as long as you have it set fairly straightforwardly um, you should be able to get the similar type of effect. So what we've got here is I've got um, rock and roll tune and I've just centered my view uh, in Logic on the the verse um, the verse section here. Now in my mixing page I've got it selected to single window so I can just concentrate on my verse track and everything that is associated with it. So here we have uh, the main vocal sent to bus 4, so I've got a little bit of tape delay. I've actually turned that off for the, bike for the time being. Um, I'm sending it also to bus 14, which is uh, for a little bit of parallel compression. And it's also sent to a bus group with along with the parallel compression, so I've got my, my one main fader for my vocal. That's just how I've had this, this um, track set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of new auxes. Now the easiest way to do that is to come over here to this little plus button and um, create another couple of auxes. So I'm going to select two auxes and I want them both to be mono. Um, I want to uncheck this box ascending so I want them both to be set to a new bus. Now I'm just going to set them to bus 20. Um, I can't exactly remember how many buses I've used in this project so far so I'm going to hopefully keep it out of the way of anything else. Um, we can always change this later. So I'm just going to create those two buses. Now they're not going to appear here yet because I haven't actually used them because I'm under a single view, I haven't actually used them on this track yet, so I'm just going to quickly send to that bus. Now you can, what you can actually see is that on bus 20, we're actually selecting two auxes here, 18 and 19. So I'm just going to select them both here. Um, now I'm going to quickly name them. So I'm going to call that harm for harmonizer, uh, harmonizer one, and I'm going to tab across and harmonizer two. For the other one. Now what's also useful is to group these and send them out of a bus as well. So I'm going to take them out to bus 21. You can see that I've tried this already. So that I can have them both on one fader as well. Now I'm just going to pan those both apart because that's how one of the ways this, this effect is uh, created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert in my first insert box there, I'm going to insert a pitch shifter 2 plugin. Any any plugin that can pitch by sense is what you're looking for. So I'm going to use this plugin. I'm going to leave the mix to 25%. Uh, that's a wet wet dry ratio. Um, I found that that tends to sound quite natural when it's 100% wet. It tends to sound a bit too alien. Um, so I, I want a bit of the dry mix in there as well. I'm going to move this slider back to zero, and I want this one to be down by between well about nine nine cents down. I'm going to keep it on vocal, that's the algorithm that works best with uh, melodic material. And that's all done, except there's a little cross down here, and this is the important one, the delay, which delays the input of the this this um, this plugin, apart from the uh, what, it, what is actually feeding it via the send. So I'm just going to have that delayed roughly where it is. Um, the Eventide split it apart left and right, and the delays were anywhere between 9 and 14 milliseconds, and about 9 sense either way as well. So I'm just going to do that and then I'm just going to hold Command and Alt and just copy that across and then edit this one in here as well. So this one I'm actually going to shift the other way. So I'm going to put it 9 cents up and on this I'm going to make the delay slightly more just to get them slightly differently. I'm just going to put this on on 14 milliseconds. So what we can then do is I've inserted here uh, a modulation delay. This is something else that some people like to think sounds quite good. I've seen in a couple of forums people have suggested this um, putting a modulation delay on the sum of the two split parts 
Um, and there's a setting in here, slow flanger, which can can be quite nice uh, if it's if it's blended in quite subtly. Again, you have got your output mix here, so you can uh, kind of blend that effect. It's going to get it moving and kind of phasing over time, which is quite nice. So now what we have is one track here, the vocal track. So when we turn up one bus, it's going to be sending to both of these auxiliary tracks. One is pitch shifted down, one is pitch shifted up. They're both delayed by different amounts. They're panned apart and then they are grouped together into a modulation delay. So I'm just going to put that fader back to zero. And I'm just going to show you what this kind of sounds like. Um, So if we, if we gradually turn up the fader level, you can really hear it's quite, you can really hear the coursing effect now, so we're just going to tug it down. And I think the, the key with this type of effect is to get it set so that you miss it when it's not there. So I'm just going to mute it out for the next section. So now the vocal on its own sounds a bit naff, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more. So it's just adding a bit of bit of attitude to it, a little bit of thickening. And if we uh, unmute the modulation delay, you can hear that as well. So you just get a little bit more movement, a bit more stereo imaging. It allows you to get a really thick, wide vocal source. It also works really well on things like electric guitars, acoustic guitars, anything really that's mono that you want to spread out into the stereo field. And that's it.